Now, Dennis, um, it, it's award season here. It's actually the um, Screen Actors Guild Award um, tonight. We had the Golden Globes a couple of weekends ago. Obviously, the Oscars are just around the corner. And Jack Nicholson's career really has led to many, many awards. I think it's something like 12 Academy Award nominations. He's won two Best Actor Oscars and a Best Supporting Actor um, Academy Award for Terms of a Demon. But what qualities does he bring? To, to a performance, whether it's comedy, whether it's something touching, whether it's something dark, you know, what is it that's quintessentially Jack Nicholson on the screen? Well, these 15 years where he labored in the vineyards and, you know, it, it did his uh, his comedy turn in uh, uh, everything from uh, The Little Shop of Horrors to um, uh, Crybaby, uh, he, he learned, I mean, he had the, the opportunity to uh, to not only study under some uh, terrific uh, uh, classically trained uh, actors, uh, but he also uh, had trial and error. I mean, you know, there's nothing better in the world than to go out and fail and fail and fail and fail again. Most people have no idea that uh, there was such a Jack Nicholson. So by the time he started to hit his stride uh, in his mid-30s, um, in the 1970s, he uh, he was a consummate actor, and he he brought all of that uh, uh, delicious emotional meld uh, from his childhood uh, to virtually every part that uh, was handed to him. Uh, he was uh, he was a professional. Uh, he still is a professional, although I would. <laughs> I would say that he hasn't done anything uh, of particular merit since uh, uh, about Schmidt, but that's just my you opinion. You didn't like the bucket list? Come on. Oh, <laughs> Joanne. <laughs> we'll go back to your six reallys here. Uh, I really, really, really didn't. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Was it Fina? Well, listen, I'm going to come back and ask both you and Dotton about your, your favourite Jack Nicholson um, films. But let's just listen to it. I'll squeeze in one last piece of, of audio. And in this clip, we hear Jack Nicholson discussing his thoughts on winning and losing at the Oscars. I, I'll tell you, I was never a good loser, though. I promise you that. Uh, I, one, <laughs> one night, I mean, <laughs> we went with Evans. <laughs> we went with Evans and... Uh, my girlfriend and I went with Bob and, and Robert Town in the car to Chinatown. And, of course, we lost ten nominations, and the only winner was Robert Town, who was trying to sort of hide his Academy Award <laughs> under his seat on the car back as Evans. And, uh, and I talked about being as happy as a nun with the clap. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Angelic and I went to the to the dance afterward and and accused her father of being absurdly drunk in front of the nation. <laughs> we went out to raise hell. It was fun. I've always enjoyed him. I know it's not fashionable at the moment, but I mean, I I like all of that stuff. I have to admit it. I mean, I, it's the, it's the quality I'm least loaded in. I know, but I like the glamour. I like it. I mean, I liked. It's a long row down the front. You see all these, you know, very meaningful to you faces of people that you you look at. On it. It's great. I enjoy it. I have, I'm sorry. Jack Nicholson there speaking at the 1976 San Francisco International Film Festival. Um, a, a real treat from the Pacifica Radio archives. Um, just before we go, Dennis, I just wanted to ask you, you know, what kind of insight do you feel that this audio provides us, um, you know, into the mind of, of Jack Nicholson? You know, being here in Los Angeles, we do see him quite a lot, you know, courtside um, at the Lakers basketball game. But this kind of gives us a, a little something else to, to his character, I think. Oh, absolutely. I think that, I mean, that's a real treasure, Joanne, that you stumbled on because uh, it shows uh, without anybody having to say it, how razor sharp the guy's mind is. I mean, you know, to uh, uh, I, I can't remember exactly how it went, but you know, his uh, taking the statement about uh, about work and how he likes to work late, um, but he likes women who are exactly the opposite. 
<laughs> you know, it was like that was extemporaneous, and to uh, you know to have come up with that right off the top of his head shows uh, who we're dealing with here. This is not a guy who just reads lines. This is a guy who thinks before he speaks, and uh, and not in sound bites necessarily. He's uh, um, he, he's a rarity, and to find a piece of tape that shows that. Because, as you know, he never gives interviews, he never does television, uh, and that's just been true throughout his career. Uh, so when you find something like that, and it shows that uh, in his own voice, uh, you've, you've found a real treasure. Why is it that he never gives interviews or does television? Why is that? Um... For a couple of reasons, not the least of which is, and I think that it's been borne out by what we've seen among politicians and uh, movie stars over the past 10 to 20 years, he learned early on that once you say something on TV, uh, it stays there forever. Uh, you know, we don't have to look any further than the Pacific Archives. Here he makes a statement uh, 30 years ago, and uh, here it comes back to him. Well, what if he'd said something you know, something wretched about the Queen, uh, and uh, he'd never be able to show his face in London again. I'm not sure about that, but I guess... <laughs> <laughs> so, be before we go then, then, gentlemen, because we just have a couple of minutes left, um, Dennis, you first, your, your favorite Jack Nicholson film. Oh, hands down, Chinatown. Uh, I, think, I, I think Chinatown... Um, you know, I, I, I actually I have to go... I, I, there's... there's uh, five or six of them, but I think Chinatown uh, still stands out as um, right next to uh, Citizen Kane as uh, the, the best um, motion picture ever put on, on, uh, ever put on the screen, uh, or to come out of Hollywood at any rate. Um, well, I think you're right about Chinatown. I think not only because, you know, an actor that spends half the time of the movie with a plaster across his nose has got to be, <laughs> has got to be <laughs> in a league of his own. And also, it's a, you know, it's relatively the story of the, the birth of Los Angeles to a certain extent, as you know. But this guy's made so many, oh, he's, he's created so many iconic characters. You can't, you know... Exactly. <laughs> One flew over the cuckoo's nest. You know, who's yeah. ever going to be able to make another movie about, uh, you, you know, a, a mental health institution? That you know, it's always going to be compared, isn't it? Uh, over the cuckoo's nest. Well, you don't know how to handle the truth. <laughs> well, oh, we're so full of quotes tonight. Yeah, exactly. Aren't we? <laughs> we could go on and on and on. Thank he, you, Dennis. He, he, we'll say one thing. He's one of the greatest, mate. One of the greatest. They don't quite make him like that anymore. Yeah, Dennis, thanks very much for joining her as ever. Oh, thanks for those you. rare bits of archive. I'm sure that uh, we're all very grateful to you for that. Ah, genius <laughs> at work, eh? That's a proper genius. Thank you very much, Dennis. That was great. Uh, well, that was uh, pretty cool on your part, too. You, uh, you, you are a genuine uh, professional. <laughs> good. Have a good evening. All right, take care.